If you've had diverticulitis, you're going to want to know what to do after the infection has cleared. Let's talk about your next steps and why they are so important. The most important thing for you to do is to have a colonoscopy. And I know that's not what you wanted me to tell you. So I'm going to give you one chance to get out of this. If you have had a good colonoscopy with a good prep within a year, then you do not need to repeat it at this time, but otherwise you should. And let's talk about why. The reason a colonoscopy is so important is because diverticulitis is associated with cancer and large polyps. Now I want to emphasize this is diverticulitis, not diverticulosis. This is when you've had the infection. So let's be specific. This is not common. And in those patients who have had uncomplicated diverticulitis, about 1% will be found to have a cancer or a large polyp at the time of a follow-up colonoscopy. So even if you've had a prior colonoscopy, we encourage you to repeat it unless it was within a year. Let's take an example. Imagine two years ago, you had a colonoscopy and they identified a polyp and the recommendation was that you follow up in five years. Now here we are, you are having diverticulitis. It's only been two years, so why not wait another three? Well, if this was associated with a large polyp, in those intervening three years, that large polyp could be at risk of progressing into a more sizable lesion. We have the opportunity now to remove it so that we can prevent colon cancer down the road. For patients with complicated diverticulitis, these are patients who had an abscess that needed to be drained or other complications. The risk of having a cancer at this time can actually approach 10%. And this is not odds that people want to play with. So that's why it's so important to get the colonoscopy at follow-up. Most people don't want to play with those odds because while a colonoscopy is not that fun, it's really not that bad. Check out our other videos on what a colonoscopy is. So you better understand the procedure. Now that you're eager to have a colonoscopy, I bet you're wanting to have one next week. But slow down. It takes six weeks to fully recover from diverticulitis. So milk this. Enjoy this time. This is important for two reasons. Those six weeks is going to ensure that all the inflammation has subsided. So when we do perform a colonoscopy, we have a much clearer view. Not only do we get a more productive exam, we have a safer exam because there is a higher risk of perforation while a patient has diverticulitis. So by waiting those six weeks, you're gonna have a much more productive and safer exam. Now you're probably wondering, why did I get you all worried about having cancer only to tell you to just wait and chill? Well, the fact is, cancer doesn't progress at a very fast rate. And so we know that waiting those six weeks is not gonna make any real difference in what the outcome of a cancer would be, should we find one. And we know that most likely you probably don't have one. And we know that by waiting, you're gonna have a safer, more productive exam. Let's talk about something less dire than cancer, like fiber. When you're ready, increase the fiber in your diet. Do this after you feel fully recovered and after you've had your colonoscopy because during the colonoscopy cleanse, we actually often ask people to decrease the fiber in the diet so that there's less volume of stool and residue and we can get a better look. But thereafter, try to increase the amount of fiber in your diet aiming to increase it towards 35 grams stepwise over about a month. That way you don't all of a sudden introduce too much fiber into your diet, which can tend to make people feel bloated. So what happens further down the road of recovery? Well, there are three potential futures for a person who's recovered from a first attack of diverticulitis. About one in three people will have complete resolution of symptoms. One in three people may have episodic cramps, but not again have full-blown diverticulitis and one in three people will have a full-blown attack. If you have a second attack, it will likely be of similar severity. There was an old thought that second attacks can actually be more severe, but that's less the present thinking. However, once you're a person who has had recurrent attacks of diverticulitis, you are more likely to be a person who has chronic symptoms. Increasing fiber in your diet and exercise are the surest bets towards a recovery with minimal symptoms. If your recovery is complicated, seek the help of a gastroenterologist. I hope this information helps you along in your own recovery. Thank you and be safe.